How do you put up with some of the fellow politicians, some who would struggle to get a job in the real world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 That sounds like a question for Jackie. I struggle. I struggle full stop because many of them really don't have real-life experience. There's nothing more that annoys me. They've come straight out of uni, straight into the Liberal Labor Party, had their ass covered the whole time they've been there, and then they make them into a politician. I just find the best politicians actually have gone through some really, really hard luck times in their own life and actually understand they, they feel it, they've smelled it before they've touched that in their own lives. And I think that is a bonus. And as much as, you know, people say, you know, how do you feel about losing 12, 12 years of your life when I had to fight Department of Veterans Affairs and it was really, really quite awful to go through. Um, firstly, I say I thank God that I got a second chance at life. But secondly, had I have not gone through what I've been through in my life, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd have the compassion nor the patience to, to, um, to, stay, to make sure that I stay in and do what I need to do. I think that real life experience really, really helps me um, a great deal and continues to help me. It's not just that it's the people who come up to me and talk to me on the street, which is a lot of them. They'll, they'll, they speak to me about their real life experiences. So even if I haven't quite got a touch in the area that they've had, trust me, I will know it because I would have touched it somewhere, somewhere a little bit. Um, so for me, I'm very grateful. I are, some, are some harder to sit next to than others? Oh, absolutely, yeah, even still. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it looks yes. Like, looks, like, looks like you want to name a few. No, no, I won't, I won't do that. I won't do that, just in case, you know, I, I need things in the future. <laughs> <laughs> There's a politician. <laughs> You've learned a few I, things. I, I have to say, it's just much easier if you can try and have friends up there, especially if you are trying to change the dynamics, especially when you're looking at New Start, when you know how difficult it is for those people that are on bloody $40 a day and it's just not survival. It's, they can't even survive on that. Mm. So, you know, having having that experience of being on a, on a single mum's pension and trying to bring up raised two boys during a really traumatic time of my life was really difficult. So to go without, I know what that feels like and it's really difficult. And somehow I, I had a door open. I was one of the lucky ones and I managed to be able to get through that. But many don't. And they sit in that rut and we just can't seem to get them out of it mm. and it's god awful. Yeah, Caroline, if we're looking at the, mm. the Liberal Party right now, yeah. I mean, in some parts of the country it's tearing itself apart over these issues of who's in and who's out. We're seeing what's happening in Victoria right now with another motion now to potentially expel Moy Redeeming. What does that say about how uh, the Liberal side of politics is dealing with these issues? Who's in, who's out, who gets to, who gets to stay? Well, I don't... So I'm the president of the, the West Australian division. Mm. We're, we're federated. So I have absolutely no visibility about what goes on in Victoria. I don't really want to comment on Victoria because I wouldn't really like those other divisions commenting on my division. <laughs> um, but what we... So we've, we've, we've come through a pretty rough patch in WA. Um, we, we had a very poor election result, a state election result in 2021 and, and quite a poor result federally the last time around. And then I guess it's you, you look and you think, OK, well, how do we do this differently next time to have a better result? And so we've actually, um, as, as part of our preparation now, looking forward to the next elections, um, we've just launched our Blueprint 2025 program, which is, uh, which is a candidate preparedness and training program. Mm. But we've actually gone out and we're like, well, like Jackie said, we want people from different backgrounds with different experience who've actually been in the community and been in business, you know, identify those people, a lot of those... We've got 60 applicants in the program, so and it's important in, in something like the Liberal Party where you do have that democratic pre-selection process. It's people don't just get put in places. So it is really important to, I suppose, train people to get them ready for politics, get them ready so, for campaign. So, so I'm just wondering... Is, is, does it make it difficult to attract people if you have things play out like in, in Victoria at the moment? I mean, someone like Moira Redeeming, for instance, would that be someone that you'd be looking to in Western Australia? And, and when we say, you know, that you're Western Australia, that's Victoria, we know the federal leader, Peter Dutton, has weighed in, is concerned about damage to mm. the brand of the Liberal Party. So what does this say at the moment about the party? Well... Off the back of any election loss, and look, let's be honest, I mean, Labor's doing well at the moment. Labor was a basket case in mm. 2013. So this it's not as though, like, this is the first time that this has ever happened. On the back of um, election losses, you do tend to have uh, that rancour. 
that's kind of not standard, but it does happen. It's not unusual. It does make it difficult from the point of view that when you look at sort of things like what's happening in Victoria, it distracts from the actual issues, it distracts from our actual values, it distracts from the things that we actually uh, we're there for and that we want to do. And I've been very clear in the West Australian Division, if, if you want to do something, if it isn't uh, going to advance the West Australian people, if it isn't going to advance our electoral prospects, then just don't do it. Mm. Because I don't really have tolerance for it, frankly. I, I might just get a quick response from you, Nova, on this, because you were in politics mm. for a while as well and then walked away from it. Was, what was it like being there at the time and seeing it up close? Um, <clears throat> well, when I went in, it wasn't what I signed up for. Mm. Um, you know, being that first black woman in the Australian Parliament, um, you know, you go there to serve your people, you go to serve your constituents and, you know, just um, 24 hours news cycle. You know, I, I endured racism three to four times a week, every week for 52 weeks of the year. You have your death threats and I'm sure Jackie's aware of a lot of the stuff that we endure. And, you know, it, it's almost like, when you're elected, people feel the need that they can do whatever they want. It's like you're owned by the Australian people, so they, they feel the need to be able to attack you. And that's how I sort of felt the time in, in, in Parliament. You know, it wasn't what I signed up for. And I felt that I could have contributed so much more. Um, I left for family reasons. And, uh, you know, the fact that I was the first Aboriginal woman and now there's nine in the, in the Australian mm. Parliament, which is fantastic, and there's more women... Um, and I guess, you know, more women who are representative. You know, the Australian Parliament is, I sort of feel now, quite reflective of the Australian population. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't, because there's a big <laughs> section because of the Constitution if you're profiting from the Crown. So if you're federal police, if you're military, uh, if you're if you're a nurse and, and you're getting paid by the by um, federal, you, you have to fiery, leave your job before you. You declare. have to leave. Yep. Now you tell me if those people on those normal incomes out there that can afford to take 12 months off and then back themselves with a million bucks behind them as an independent. So these guys here, the red and the blue team, I tell you what, they they still own that. They they own. Uh, the board game, I can assure you that much. We're coming and we're coming fast, but you try and compete with their 100 million bucks or their 90 million bucks that they're going to spend each election, you try and take time off work and try and be a family person, look after your children. Um, the only way into politics, it seems, at this point in time, is to go with one of the major parties because it is very difficult mm. or hope to Christ you bounce the ball off somebody like Clive Palmer. Because seriously, <laughs> seriously, there is no other way in. That's how hard it is right now. And of course, Malcolm Turnbull changed the rules. So there's, there's no more of the, you know, the Ricky Mills where we had normal people maybe just getting in off once again the bounce of the ball. That was all removed. So the, the major parties have sewn it all up. So the only place you're going is, is the major parties. Of course, I will, I will be out there um, and I will have another shot. I will go bigger next time. But we'll run on no money. This is the difference because we just... Well, I refuse to take from corporates and I won't take from unions because I refuse to allow the network to be bought up. It has to, it has to run on its own two feet. But right now I'm missing a big pool and we don't have the cash. That's where we're at and that's where Australian politics is. And if you say that's democracy, well, blow me over because it bloody is not. <laughs>